Beauty. And today, I'm on a bug hunt. Oh, look. Can you see that in my magnifying glass? It's a ladybird pupa. I've got something already. Can you guess what it is? They've got eight legs and they have a special talent for making webs. Did you guess? That's right, spiders. Do you know how a spider makes a web? How does a spider web work? Let's find out. How does it work? Spider web. The spiders build webs from a material they make inside their bodies called silk. Spiders don't just use silk to make webs. They use it for lots of things, like climbing to get places, wrapping up their eggs to keep them safe, and trapping insects, like flies. This is Warren, and Warren's a spider expert. He's got some different spiders, and they all make different types of web. This is a jumping spider and they're called jumping spiders because they jump. And they build webs like little tents over themselves that shelter them from the rain. But look at her lovely little face. Now this is a Chilean rose tarantula and her name's Rosie. Oh, she's very soft and tickly. We don't have tarantulas in the UK. Warren keeps Rosie as a pet. They build nests in burrows underground. And they use their spider silk to make them all cosy inside. And here we have a garden spider. And they make these brilliant round shaped webs. We call them orb webs. And they use them to catch flying insects. To find out how a garden spider spins an orb web, I think we should take a closer look. Inside the spider's body is a gland that makes liquid silk. When the liquid silk shoots out quickly, the spider pulls it with its legs and it turns hard, making a silk thread. The silk thread attaches to a branch. This is called the bridge line. The spider travels up and down, releasing the silk. The last thread drops down in the middle to make a V-shape. Then, the spider drops it down to a twig below, making a shape like the letter Y. These are called the scaffolding threads. Next, the spider makes the threads that come out from the middle, called the radial threads. Then, the spider makes this spiral shape, starting from the middle, working upwards. When the shape is right, the spider makes sticky silk droplets to catch flies and drops it on the web. Then, the spider waits. When the web tickles, the spider feels a tug on the thread. It pops out and wraps up the fly in silk to eat later. Spiders are amazing, aren't they? It takes a spider about an hour to build a web, and they can make one every day. Well, I set up one of my special cameras and filmed a time lapse. And a time lapse means we can film something that happens really slowly, but when we watch it back, it happens much quicker. Like this. Look, the spider's building the radial threads. And now she's spinning the spiral threads. I hope she's not getting dizzy. Can you see the liquid silk coming out of the spider? It turns into a hard thread as the spider pulls it with its legs. All she has to do now is wait to catch lunch on her sticky web. Great job, little spider. The orb web is a brilliant structure. I'm going to try and make an orb web myself using string. First up, the super strong bridge line. Then the spider will move along this line till it feels balanced in the middle and drop a vertical line downwards. The spider then attaches the line to the floor before adding threads to make the web stronger and then spinning the radial threads. 
Those are the threads that look a little bit like the spokes of a bicycle wheel. It's definitely a fiddly job. <laughs> and lastly, the spiral. And this is the bit that turns the web into a fly-catching net. Let's go. It looks great, doesn't it? So clever. I loved meeting lots of different spiders and finding out how spider webs work. What was your favourite bit? Do you remember the name of the material that spiders use to make their webs? That's right, it's called silk. Did you have a favourite type of spider? Mine was Rosie, the Chilean rose tarantula. And did you see the spider spinning her old web on my special camera? It's really fun to hunt for bugs and spiders in the garden, but I also like to water the plants, and for that, I use a watering can. Watering cans have a great shape, don't they? They have a handle and a spout. Tip me up and pull me out. <laughs> but do you know how a watering can's made? Let's find out. How is it made? Watering can. To find out how watering cans are made, I've come to a watering can factory. Watering cans start out as a big flat sheet of metal called galvanised steel. That makes a fun wobbly sound, doesn't it? <laughs> the first job is to cut the big sheet of metal into the right size pieces to make our can. And it goes through a machine called a guillotine. Chomp! And the pieces it cuts out are called blanks. There we are. Look at all the different shapes. This piece is a circle. And this bit looks like it could be a mask. But how do all these flat pieces of metal come together to make a watering can like this? Oh, yeah. Now, what part of the watering can do you think the mask-shaped piece is going to make? The top part, it's called the neck. First, the metal is pressed. And bent around two blocks into an oval shape. The oval-shaped piece fits into the oval-shaped hole, but still loose. Hmm. So a hand press presses the two pieces together. So we've got the top part of our watering can, but what else do we need? Hmm. That's right, we need a handle. The handle is made on this clever machine called a power press. One, two, three. Then it's bent into shape. So we have a handle, but what else do we need? That's right, a spout. Vicky makes the spout by bending a piece of flat metal into a tube. We have a spout, but it's too straight. It needs bending. There we go. We have a spout. Can you see it's thicker at one end and thinner at the other? This is the end that the water will come out of. But you need something to carry the water. The body. And that body is going to be made out of our rectangle piece of metal. Wow! The pressure from the rolling machine has bent the flat sheet of metal into a cylinder. Can you see? top of the watering can is stuck to the body. This seals them together so water can't leak out. Now we have all the parts. The body, the handle, the spout and another piece of tube that holds everything together called the cross stay. And it's Sophie's job to stick them together. 
she uses a soldering iron to heat the metal and that melts the soldering metal which acts like a glue and sticks everything together. Here we are, but it's still missing something. The bottom. The bottom is fixed in place on a spinning press that fixes the body and the bottom together. Now the watering cans have all of their parts, they're ready to be painted. And for that, they're hung up on this rack. It's like a washing line for watering cans. Wow, look at the green paint. It's covering the watering can really quickly. This special paint is electrostatically charged, which means it's a bit like a magnet works in a similar way to this balloon. Watch what happens if I rub the balloon on my hair. Can you see that my hair sticks to it? And that's because when I rubbed the balloon, I gave it a charge. And the same thing happens to the paint. So we can see it in action for ourselves. I'm going to use one of my special slow motion cameras, which means when we watch it back, it will appear much slower. Okay. Let's go, Mark. Wow, can you see the electromagnetic paint? It's a powder blowing around, and we call this powder coating. The powdery paint sticks to the metal watering can because it's electrostatically charged, just like my hair sticks to the balloon. How clever is that? Don't they look great? Now they've all been powder coated, they have to go in the oven for about 20 minutes. This makes them hard and shiny. These look fantastic. They just need one last finishing touch. This part is called the rose. It goes on the end of the spout and it has lots of holes in it. So when the water comes out, it looks like it's raining. There we go, ready to water some plants. What did you like most about seeing how watering cans are made? Do you remember the name of the top of the watering can? That's right, it's the neck. Did you hear the sound the wobbly metal made? <laughs> and did you see the electromagnetic paint stick to the watering can on a special camera? So the next time you help water the plants with a watering can, you'll know how it was made. And if you see a spider, you'll know how it uses silk to spin a web. I'll see you next time. <laughs>